Okay, so welcome back everyone. So our next speaker today is Professor Lin Lin from the University of California at Berkeley. And it will uh, talk about selected columns of the density matrix for vanier functions with entangled energy bands. So thank you a lot, Professor Lin, for, for accepting our invitation and the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. It's a really a wonderful uh, activity and sorry that I cannot be there in person. I'm uh, organizing a uh, uh, semester long program at IPAM, the UCLA right now. Uh, so uh, interestingly, there are quite a number of people here interested in one year too. So uh, uh, this uh, one year definitely has a lot of impact. Uh, in even in the applied math community. So this is uh, uh, a joint work with uh, Anil Damley, uh, who's uh, currently assistant professor at Cornell, Antoine Levet at uh, INRIA, and uh, uh, Lexing Ying at Stanford. So since this is an expert audience and uh, there have been a lot of uh, wonderful talks uh, in the past two days, so I'll uh, directly uh, start from uh, the optimization problem. So as we know, uh, the maximally localized one-year function, uh, it optimizes a functional called a spread functional denoted by this uh, omega. Uh, so it is a function of the one-year orbitals called phi or w. And uh, this phi uh, is uh, a unitary rotation of the bands called psi. Uh, the geometric intuition is that if you want to localize it, you can minimize uh, a second moment uh, so this is, if you have n orbitals, you add up the square uh, of the uh, position operator and minus is center. And uh, this one, if you sum over all of them, this minimizes so the total spread. And uh, this is exactly what localization wants you to do. Here, this U is called a gauge degree of freedom. It doesn't change anything physically, such as the density matrix. Uh, however, this uh, uh, U uh, determines uh, the local extent that this orbitals uh, can be localized. Here I'm presenting the real space or the molecular version for simplicity for the uh, condensed matter or periodic systems. Uh, this X needs to be carefully defined, but uh, uh, these are well documented in the literature. So there, uh, uh, it has been very successful. Uh, and uh, we have seen a lot in the past two days, uh, but uh, numerically there are some robust in this issue. Uh, one is it suffers from the so-called initialization problem, uh, which means that it's a uh, quartic uh, functional and with a non-trivial constraint. Uh, so the uh, it, the nonlinear optimization it's a nonlinear optimization, and it's quite possible to get stuck at the local minima. Later, I'm going to show an example of it. Uh, then, uh, for the entangled band structure, what we need to do is to perform localization in the absence of a band gap. This is uh, quite different from the uh, Euro scenario of one year localization uh, that can be established theoretically. That says if the energy bands are isolated, then uh, and uh, the churn number is, uh, is non trivial. And then you can have localization, and otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise you don't. But uh, when you uh, really talk about uh, uh, entangled band structure, is everything's always there is no gap, well, either up or below. Uh, so how do you uh, do localization? Is actually not entirely uh, obvious. Uh, there are a number of ways one can do it, and uh, uh, both problems needs to be carefully addressed, especially if you want to do high throughput computation. You want to run one year for many materials to do some screening, and uh, the robust issue, robustness issue is really the key. Uh, I want to say that other than the uh, original paper by Mazar and Mandeville, and there are uh, several alternative methods developed by uh, many groups in the past uh, uh, two decades. Uh, this is by no means an exhaustive uh, list of methods. Uh, so, for example, Stigerson at all, and had this a partly occupied one year function. Uh, this is somewhat related to the entanglement, uh, entangled band that I'm going to refer to later. Francois Gigi has a work uh, using the so called cosine sine decomposition that is more robust, especially it allows you to identify 
uh, all the orbitals to the extent that you can localize. If certain orbitals cannot be localized, you just leave them to be delocalized. So in chemistry literature, uh, Kinesia uh, uh, is, to my knowledge, uh, one of the relatively recent works that has generated uh, impact, at least within uh, ab initial chemistry, uh, uh, called the uh, IO method, uh, this intrinsic atomic orbital. Um, uh, it was, I, if I understand correctly, it was originally presented uh, for the uh, molecular case, but it has been increasingly used for the uh, condensed matter systems as well. Uh, so uh, I think our uh, co-organizers, uh, uh, Mustafa and uh, also Sinisa Ko, uh, uh, so they and Steve Louis, uh, they developed a method to improve the robustness uh, by selecting some initial projected orbitals and then do a more chemistry-like approach uh, to uh, improve the robustness of the issues of uh, finding localized one-year functions in 2015. Uh, then there are two math groups, uh, so uh, uh, also interested in the numerical aspects of this topic. Uh, they also, uh, both groups have developed a number of things along the theoretical lines as well in the past few years. So if you're interested along this direction, you can check some of the authors and uh, find the works. Uh, so in this PRB paper, uh, Kansas, Levitt, Panati, and Sous, and the uh, presented a, a very interesting method, uh, kind of like a generalizing the famous construction of a one-year functions in 1D. Uh, and uh, uh, then this was further extended by Stubbs, Watson, and Lou uh, last year and uh, generalizing again, this uh, PXG type of constructions. So uh, what we did in the uh, past few years since about 2015 is a very simple method uh, called the selected columns of the density matrix, SCBM, which is in the talk. And uh, tomorrow, uh, Valerio will also give a very nice uh, uh, like tutorial uh, in terms of uh, how to use that in one year. It uh, uh, it's, uh, can be used in one year through uh, quantum espresso, such, such as PW to one year subroutine. Uh, so uh, I'll first explain the idea behind the SCBM for the molecular case and then explain how that works for the periodic case. Uh, the basic idea behind SEDM is rather straightforward, uh, which is uh, our goal is to find some orbitals that are localized. Uh, but uh, so, so uh, what kind of thing is naturally or uh, localized even without any choice? The answer is very uh, simple, which is uh, the density matrix. So, uh, uh, the density matrix uh, is for a DFT system is defined to be the outer product of uh, the Kongsham orbitals. Uh, the nice thing of the density matrix is that it is a projection operator. It is so-called a gauge invariant uh, in the sense that you put uh, any unitary rotation U and the answer doesn't change. Uh, so uh, as to this, you can see that if I really uh, 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 apply a U star uh, transformation, U is a unitary to this psi, then uh, this becomes phi U star U, and this is exactly canceled and it becomes phi phi star. So uh, from this argument, you can also immediately see that if the system is localizable, then the density matrix must be a sparse matrix. Why? Because uh, if this psi it only has very narrow support. Uh, then uh, you can see that from the matrix level, uh, those zeros will extend to the uh, to the to the full matrix. And this is a picture of it. Uh, so uh, all the eigenfunctions they are completely delocalized in the system. But if you really consider p, this is actually a very narrowly banded matrix. And this is a one D system, but uh, also it works uh, for the same argument for three D too. So our observation is that, okay, so you have this uh, low rank and uh, uh, sparse matrix. Uh, it's almost the thing you want. Uh, the question is whether you can use the already localized uh, density matrix P to help you to find one year functions. So you can uh, say that, okay, it is a low rank uh, 
of rank n, uh, why don't you just arbitrarily pick n columns of this density matrix P and call them localized orbitals? Yes, so these are localized. Uh, you pick any of, the, of this n orbitals, then they're mathematically uh, linearly independent of each other. And uh, so the, its linear combination is indeed the same as the, uh, the span uh, uh, the span of uh, all the original eigenfunctions, but there's a problem. If you really pick just the arbitrary n columns, if the two columns are too close to each other, then they are extremely linearly dependent. So the one year functions also needs to be orthogonal, right? So you have uh, n very localized orbitals, but the when you orthogonalize them, this can significantly introduce a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, extra uh, tails. So this is what you don't want. So you not only want to select n localized columns, but they should also be very much linearly independent. So uh, how do you solve this problem? Uh, the solution is actually extremely simple. Uh, so uh, the pseudocode just takes two lines of MATLAB code. Uh, so the, the theoretical justification is more complicated and uh, which I'm not going through it here, but uh, this is what you do. So uh, let's say that this is Psi, uh, which is a matrix of NG. NG, G means number of grid. Uh, you see that the sparsity is a super coordinate, coordinate dependent thing. It's not like you, I change the representation of the PXY to PGG prime in the Fourier domain, is there still a smart state? No, you have to uh, really represent the orbitals in the real space. So you can, that's why where this PWT one year comes in and you dump out the orbitals in the real space grid. And uh, here, ND is a number of electrons or a number of bands. Uh, for simplicity, assume the system is a gap. Then what you do here is you have this tall skinny matrix, you do a transpose of that, and you run a QR zero. This zero means something called a pivoted QR. What the, the pivoted QR means is literally do what I said. You pick the columns so that they're uh, uh, using a greedy-ish algorithm. Uh, it um, picks a set of NE columns that are maximally uh, linearly independent of each other by heuristically uh, max, uh, maximizing some volume in the high dimensional space. So this will return you two, three matrices. The Q or U is a unitary matrix. R is an upper triangular matrix, so we won't use them. And a set of permutations, which tells you which columns are to be selected. That's why it's called the selected columns of density matrix. You also see that I'm not directly running this uh, to the density matrix, because, which is of size NG by NG, that's enormously large, and you cannot even fit that in the memory. You can prove that the SCDM for the density matrix, the selected columns of the density matrix, it can be equivalently implemented using this much more economic guy. So once you have this U, which is of size NG by NG, you just uh, literally multiply this uh, band by this U, and boom, you're done. So these are the SCDM generated uh, localized function. Those are different from the optimized uh, uh, one-year uh, orbitals uh, because, well, throughout this procedure, these two lines, I didn't uh, uh, like optimize with respect to any given functional, uh, but the difference can be very, very small, as you will see later. This is very easy to code and to parallelize, right? And it's deterministic. There's no initial guess. You don't need to select, hey, this band needs to be of a feature sp3, the other is sp2. Uh, no, uh, it, it will find it automatically. Uh, and uh, as I said, the sperm vector, you don't need to use them, but encodes uh, the idea of the SCDM. Uh, these are two pictures uh, showing you that it gives you the sensible thing uh, you expect. Uh, you, you get these pictures by literally run the two lines. So you do a supercell calculation, and uh, uh, for the silicon, you uh, do a uh, get the U, you transpose, you plot one of them, you find that naturally has a sigma bound. I didn't put any initial orbitals saying 
the center of the one year orbital uh, is not on the atom, but on the bond, but it will find automatically if it's on the bond and for the water. And again, it will find this uh, uh, nice orbitals uh, automatically. Uh, so it's uh, very parallelizable. Uh, there's uh, not that uh, much you need to do to make it parallel. Uh, so if the SEDM becomes uh, more expensive and uh, you can just uh, run the uh, uh, parallel uh, QR and uh, 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 QRCP, column QR with column pivoting and the parallel as well. This is a, a number of years ago with the scalar pack, but uh, recently there has been a, a increasing interest in uh, accelerating these algorithms with the randomized numerical linear algebra packages. I believe the RAND QRCP performs even better, uh, both sequentially and par uh, in the parallel setup. Uh, okay, so uh, let me, uh, before going to the, uh, the SDMK, let me talk about uh, two other things to make it faster. Uh, 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 well, uh, one is to make it faster, the other is uh, a way to treat periodic system. Uh, to make it faster, the bottleneck is really the QRCP procedure. The next, the next one is just a matrix matrix multiplication. You call it a gem, uh, um, the general matrix matrix multiplication, which is very efficient. Uh, so in this paper, uh, we uh, thought whether this QRCP, uh, which can be a computational bottleneck, uh, can be accelerated for large systems of interest without suffering the quality. Uh, so this is a procedure that we developed called the approximate localization refinement. Uh, what it does is something that is very straightforward. Uh, uh, so the, the quite intuitive. The intuitive idea is that uh, you first do some random sampling, let's say of the electron density. You want to find NE columns, but you pick a few more. Uh, well, uh, theoretically, it's bounded by NE times log NE called the candidate points. Uh, so those should be sampled according to the electron density, which is just a vector that's very efficient. Uh, from this uh, point, you can run a QRCP uh, that gives you some approximate localized orbitals. It sounds like this should be okay because uh, you uh, select a few points and there should be, uh, you have some buffer, you run a QRCP and it should give you pretty localized orbitals. Uh, but it turns out it turns out that this is not uh, uh, good enough. So what I'm showing here is uh, like a, a simple example, a small molecule is a dissociation of a BH3 and H3. So uh, the idea is that at the uh, uh, beginning and uh, when at the equilibrium, so there should be some one year orbitals like uh, uh, that is shared between the boron and nitrogen and as it stretches apart and uh, this, uh, uh, orbitals increasingly uh, goes on the nitrogen and the dissociates from the boron. So uh, this is a nice test to see the robustness of the algorithm. And uh, the y-axis, I'm showing the percentage of the non-zeros. And uh, you can see that the randomized algorithm almost got it, but compared to the SDM, it seems to be a little bit uh, uh, more delocalized. And uh, this is expected because it's suboptimal. So to overcome this issue, what we do is a refinement step, which is you already have some approximately localized orbitals, and that allows you to locally group some of the, uh, uh, the columns. So you can, uh, uh, so these are the approximately localized orbitals. Then you can do a simple detection algorithm to test, uh, like to do the QRCP locally, and let's say for the molecule, uh, if it is dissociated, then I can at least run these two groups, local QRCP, and that gives you a set of points. And then you do a small global refinement uh, with a, a very tiny QRCP. So this is a two-step procedure uh, called uh, localization and refinement. Uh, we can apply this thing to larger systems of interest and see whether uh, uh, it, uh, it indeed outperforms the original QRCP. So if uh, this is a, a, a box of water with 256 uh, water molecules, if, uh, and uh, because of the relatively large E cut uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, app, if you run the QRCP uh, sequentially, that still takes like uh, 4,000 seconds. So uh, how do you uh, speed, it, uh, speed this up? 
you do the randomized uh, algorithm, and that is extremely fast and like only takes uh, like 15 seconds. And uh, uh, so the final step, which is matrix matrix multiplication, that's also much shorter than the QRCP. So the randomization step uh, that uh, is very fast, but if you look at the uh, like y axis, which is uh, uh, at the number of orbitals corresponding to a certain percentage of non zeros, you can also measure it by the spreads. You find that uh, like uh, it, there are a bunch of orbitals that are more delocalized than it should compared to the original SCDM. So you do the refinement steps, and the total cost is uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, more than one order of magnitude like a, a 30 times smaller than the SCDM. But if you really look at the statistics and the uh, difference, uh, uh, the difference with the original SCDM becomes negligible. However, I would like to uh, say that, again, if you really uh, measure in terms of uh, the spread functional the, uh, for this particular problem and uh, the one years uh, will can further localize it because it literally, the goal is to minimize the spread. So, uh, okay, so the, uh, uh, now let me just to say something on the SCDM for the uh, periodic systems. Uh, so the, uh, there are actually uh, two works uh, of SCDM for periodic systems, uh, which can be a little bit confusing. Uh, so uh, the original SCDM K with the K points, uh, was actually, uh, uh, we designed this method in this paper without uh, the sufficient amount of knowledge of what 1 and 90 does. Uh, and therefore, it was it became a little bit overly complicated. Uh, you, in other words, you can also say that it is generates even more localized orbitals than what uh, 1 and 90 generates. The reasons are the following. So uh, if you really look at the supercell perspective, uh, there is no reason why you cannot allow a gauge, uh, matrix, uh, gauge matrix mixing the bands from all the k points. Uh, but uh, you immediately run into a problem because the orthogonalization of so many orbitals alone it seems to be a very daunting task. And therefore, in 1 year 90, you can think that it chooses uh, and makes the life much uh, easier uh, by asking the gauge matrix to be K local. So it doesn't necessarily generate the most localized uh, one year functions, uh, but it is easy to work with. Uh, so uh, when we first uh, uh, wrote this paper, we didn't have this knowledge in mind. And therefore, we just uh, thought, OK, how do you really uh, allow the most general gauge mixing matrix uh, mixing band from all K points? And a naive implementation. Uh, like it gives you all the n cube scaling, n k cube scaling number of k points. And when the number of k points is 10 to the 5, I mean, this is impossible. Uh, but it turns out that with some relatively intricate usage of a fast Fourier transforms, you can reduce the entire cost of order n k log n k. And uh, uh, this method, uh, yeah, uh, maybe confusing, uh, a bit confusing in hindsight, was originally called SEDMK, but it really works. Uh, it, uh, this is for model problems. You can see the shape of the orbitals uh, for the, like, uh, acid, uh, this is the before orthogonalization, this after orthogonalization. They look really like localized orbitals. This is a zoomed in version of the orthogonalized uh, one year orbitals. And uh, this thing scales uh, indeed, like, uh, this is nk, this is nk log nk, uh, like all the way to when you have even have uh, more than 100,000 k points. So uh, just to, to, to say that this uh, uh, more elaborate way of uh, mixing the gauge, it is a possibility. Uh, but the de facto SEDMK, uh, the reason is that it, this is the version that's implemented in 1 year 90, uh, thanks to uh, Valerio's uh, work, uh, and uh, uh, is the following. Uh, you only allow the gauge to mix orbitals within each K block. Uh, so that allows you to implement some uh, relatively simple strategy uh, to uh, make this work, at least for topologically non-trivial system. Uh, remember that I haven't talked about entangled band so far. So uh, the idea is that, okay, I already know how to run an SCDM for uh, the gamma point. So I just literally take 
uh, those uh, uh, like uh, points using one anchor k point, such as gamma, and uh, to find the columns. And they use the same set of columns uh, for all the k's. The, the idea is that you will rotate the gauge so that the rotated uh, uh, bands, they are smooth in K, so that when you just apply the regular one year, which is a Fourier transform, uh, the orbitals becomes localized. Uh, so let me explain this procedure. It uh, sounds pretty complicated, but uh, uh, implementation wise, it is actually very simple. Uh, you first uh, take one, the orbitals from one, uh, uh, set of bands called, uh, 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 sorry, uh, the bands corresponding to one K point, such as gamma, you do a transpose and do a so-called QRCP. This is the Q and R, these are the selected columns. Remember that before I said that this psi times Q are the one year, but now you need to do something uh, more elaborate because uh, it's a periodic system. You select these columns using this information in pi uh, the pi is usually stored as a commutation permutation matrix or just a vector, permutation vector. You pick the first nb uh, 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 number of uh, bands per k point uh, columns, and uh, you select the columns of this uh, 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 for the uh, of, of the band for each k. Okay, this is k naught as anchor point, but here it is like uh, for each uh, all the other k's. And then you can prove. Uh, that the uh, the gauge that you want very close to the uh, one year optimized one is literally the Lovedin orthogonalization of this small matrix. So the justification is kind of like uh, so these are the conceptually the, the rotated bands uh, with a smooth gauge in K, and uh, you uh, multiply uh, the gauge matrix. Uh, to the bands uh, for all the k's, and uh, uh, you, oh, sorry, this one goes cropped. Uh, so you can see that the selected columns, you, you need to work a few lines and see that the selected columns of the density matrix for each k is literally this guy, and this uh, uh, extra factor is uh, corresponds to the so-called Lovedin orthogonalization. Let me, uh, there are a few uh, number of uh, uh, formulas here, but I, let me just, uh, Emphasize operationally what you need to do is to pick one set of uh, uh, bands and do a QRCP, and then you generate this matrix and uh, you do this. Uh, you compute this small matrix for each k. You multiply to the band orbitals. You're done. So, so it's a very uh, simple uh, implementation. This is how it works. So this is a pretty challenging chromium oxide example uh, that uh, we uh, learned from Sinisa a number of years ago. So there are, uh, uh, there are uh, like a, a, a bit issue with respect to initialization for this particular problem, because if you uh, don't initialize it correctly, uh, uh, so, so these are the shape of the orbitals, you let's say using the sp2 orbitals instead of using the d orbitals, uh, you will find that the one year uh, 98 will get stuck. Uh, so it won't lo uh, like localize to the right thing. Only if you know exactly the nature of the orbitals and initialize properly, and then you see the spread uh, beautifully optimizes uh, and uh, within converge within 30 iterations. However, uh, the point is that the if you use SCDM, you can see that it has converged from iteration one. So the reason is that if you look at like uh, uh, the, the value of the spread from the SCDM, just by running this algorithm has nothing to do, uh, has no knowledge of the nature of the orbitals whatsoever. And you'll find that the initial spread is already like a 17 uh, and uh, the localized spread is like 16.98. So from this picture, you can see that the span is like on the order of hundreds and this difference is completely negligible. Uh, so now let me uh, talk about the entangled bands. Uh, so uh, with all the preparations, uh, we can see, uh, uh, try to generalize the idea of the, uh, the uh, isolated bands to the entanglement band. And the idea is to really try to construct orbitals that has uh, a smooth gauge with respect to the k-index. 
So this is not possible if you have a metallic system or entangled band st structure, uh, but you can engineer to have like entangled uh, like a smooth gate. The idea is to look at something called a quasi density matrix. Uh, you don't have the psi k psi k bra, but you uh, add some like a profile f so that the entire uh, is called a smooth smearing function so that this thing is actually smooth in uh, with respect to k. It doesn't have the sharp edges. Uh, in particular, in localization, you can easily afford a smearing on the order of EVs. Uh, that is uh, not possible if you really think about like uh, smearing the DFT calculation, uh, which is usually on the order of uh, like MEVs, for example. So uh, uh, the, the, the procedure is the following. For the isolated band, you choose this profile F to be a step function, uh, where the step is between the energy gap. Then this just depicts the occupied bands. Uh, this uh, summation sums over all the bands. If you choose a step function, this just depicts the occupied band. For the entangled band, however, uh, these are not necessarily the optimal choices. It's just the two examples. You can definitely come up with better uh, functions yourself. Uh, so if I want to localize uh, below a certain energy level, I can use RFC function. Okay, so that has is a smooth uh, like uh, across the, the you can call the Fermi surface or like whatever energy level that you truncate. Or let's say for the like uh, copper uh, or copper oxide or something, you might just want to get the one year functions corresponding to the d orbitals, and uh, uh, you can uh, use a bump function uh, to penal uh, penalize the contribution from both uh, high energy bands and low energy bands. And this is just, a, let's say, a Gaussian. So these are two examples. Uh, give you uh, 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 see like uh, how this works for a model system uh, in one D. So the eigenfunctions they are completely delocalized. If uh, the system has a gap and you just run a one-year localization for the isolated bands, and you see this nice uh, uh, functions. Each color is a function itself, so just a clean bump. If you do entanglement, uh, entangle the case one, which is this RFC. You can see that it has more wiggles, but still uh, it is very much localized. And uh, for the entanglement uh, the case two, there will be more wiggles, but uh, nonetheless, you get uh, localized orbitals. So this is uh, the, the idea. Uh, so uh, this SEDMK turns out, I think, maybe uh, uh, yeah, uh, to, to be uh, useful for a number of things. And uh, originally, there have been some MATLAB or Julia code written by Anil and Antoine, respectively. Uh, so uh, Kanemio, uh, uh, Baroni, and Kenozi, and a couple of years ago had this very nice paper illustrating the usage of SDM, not the K version, uh, uh, and uh, for the uh, 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 for the uh, 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 for localization and uh, and to accelerate uh, uh, hybrid hybrid functional calculations. And uh, uh, also, thanks a lot to Valerio for his very nice work uh, in uh, these two papers. One said uh, uh, one year, uh, updated uh, one year uh, paper and the other is more automated high throughput calculation. And uh, I believe he's gonna give a more detailed talk on this and the usage of SEDM in one year 90 tomorrow. So uh, let me show you how uh, this, uh, thing uh, works uh, for the uh, band structure interpolation and for the uh, silicon. And you can try to find uh, not only localized uh, to one year interpolation for the occupied band, but if you tr uh, set the uh, mu c, the energy level to be around here, then you can also get a very nice interpolation of the conduction bands too. And this not only works for the RFC, but also for the bump function for the copper, you can also get all the D bands uh, pretty well. So uh, this is a more stringent test, uh, uh, which is the graphing. And because especially around the Dirac point, uh, you uh, care about whether this SEDM procedure is good enough to really get the uh, like band crossing at uh, uh, for example, the Dirac point, and you can see that indeed it interprets very well, even though there's a, 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 
that might challenge the situation. So uh, what is kind of interesting uh, that we found from this study is that uh, uh, it has been uh, long known anecdotally that uh, when you do the disentanglement, uh, and it, it is, uh, 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 so uh, the, it's not necessarily to optimize the spread that you're after, but we also independently found this uh, from a concrete example, uh, that is you have a, uh, you want to uh, interpolate the band structure of aluminum, you start from six uh, eigenfunctions and you reduce this to four, and you find that uh, if you really let uh, the one year totally uh, just uh, focus on optimizing the spread, uh, the resulting interpolation quality is very bad. Uh, but really, if you want to direct SCDM without further optimizing uh, the, the spread function of the interpolation is much better, although the spread is much, uh, is much larger. So, uh, which means that uh, at least uh, when you deal with the entanglement band, you shouldn't just uh, focus on the smaller spread. Uh, uh, so the convergence of the uh, one-year uh, uh, interpolation procedure also works pretty well. So here we compare the, com uh, the mean and the max of the error of the, uh, uh, of the one-year interpolation procedure uh, for the SDM and the one-year orbitals. They're pretty much like uh, uh, one is the density matrix, the other is the orthogonalized version and they pretty much run parallel to each other and the converges as K increases both for semiconductors and for metallic systems. Okay, so in the remaining 10 minutes, uh, let me, uh, or so, let me just uh, uh, talk about uh, this uh, variational formulation uh, for the one year uh, functions for the entangled bands, because before the procedure uh, sounds like just a one shot uh, calculation, although it can be a very good one shot. Uh, but we wonder uh, whether it is possible to combine uh, like uh, the variational aspects of the one year uh, 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 together with this uh, SCDM procedure. It turns out to be possible. Uh, so the um, so this uh, for this we uh, need to introduce the idea of frozen band. If you look at the uh, problem of the aluminum earlier, uh, the, the one problem was that we didn't freeze any band. Uh, but you should really, uh, if you're, you care about uh, the quality of the interpolation within certain energy window, you should really try to freeze it. And this is the well-known disentanglement procedure like uh, pro uh, uh, proposed by Sosa Mazzari de Vanderbilt in 2001. So uh, the idea is that you select certain, uh, uh, for each K point, you say that a certain bands uh, called NF must be fixed. And uh, how do you impose this condition? It's like the projector corresponding to the uh, one-year functions applied to the frozen band should also give you the frozen band. So this is uh, why it is frozen. So uh, uh, this problem is much more complicated than the, uh, even more complicated than the one-year 90, uh, sorry, the, the, the one-year localization thing we talked about earlier because it also involves the subspace selection process. Uh, so you essentially have three uh, parameters. You have an N outer, which is uh, uh, the number of uh, eigenfunctions or maybe all eigenfunctions you can work with. And then you need to subselect a set of one year functions. And this uh, subset is larger than the number of frozen bands. If you set number of a one year to be number frozen, then you're back to the uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're back to the, uh, the isolated case and uh, this has often has uh, obstructions. Do you need to work with more bands? Uh, so how do we enforce this constraint uh, from uh, optimization perspective? It turns out that there are a few equivalent ways of uh, writing down this pretty awkward constraint PWPF equals to PF. So the idea is that if you freeze certain bands and uh, uh, the gauge matrix is uh, correspondingly partitioned into the frozen part and the remaining part, then uh, uh, there are a few ways of uh, like uh, expressing this. Uh, I uh, don't have time to explain all of them, but let me explain this four thing, which is the most useful in practice for the XY representation. Uh, it is very intuitive. The XY representation says the following. Uh, for the uh, 
for the frozen orbitals, you keep them as is, which is the identity. The rest of them, you do a subselection. For the all of them together, you have uh, NW by NW gauge matrix and rotate, okay? So the Y matrix does the job of a selection. And uh, one, uh, together with the identity here, it creates a subspace. And once the subspace is fixed, and you can uh, uh, do a localization. So uh, there's no reason why you have to do one after another. You can actually put them uh, in a one single optimization problem. Uh, so this is the XY, uh, we call it XY variational formulation. So you minimize with respect to not U, but uh, the X and the Ys. This X and the Y uh, together define the unitary uh, gauge ro rotation so that it satisfies the orthonormality conditions by itself. Uh, this one is, uh, the formulation is different, but uh, it's equivalent to we found uh, afterwards, or after submitting the paper, we found that uh, it is equivalent to this uh, partly occupied one year function procedure. Uh, so uh, implemented uh, in a different code. So uh, uh, it, there's also a natural relation with the disentanglement procedure. Uh, so uh, in the paper by Sosa, Mazzari, and Vanderbilt, you can uh, split the spread functional into a gauge invariant part and the gauge dependent part. So the gauge invariant part exactly optimizes this Y matrix. And uh, you split this like a minimization, single minimization into two consecutive steps. One is to minimize this gauge invariant part uh, to get this, uh, like, uh, uh, do the sub uh, uh, space selection. And then you minimize this gate dependent part, which is the X to find the, uh, uh, to further minimize the spread functional. And uh, by definition, because this is like one step after another, the variational procedure by considering them both uh, gives you a slightly smaller uh, spread. Uh, so these are some numerical results. And uh, first is still the silicon. And uh, you can uh, see that uh, uh, going from the SCDM for this particular example, uh, for this particular example, the, uh, the uh, initial uh, spread of the SCDM is still not bad because if you don't do, I mean, the spread is very high. And uh, uh, you uh, do the, uh, with some frozen bands and uh, you, uh, do the round of 1 and 90, and this gives you the spread is like 27, but the variational algorithm gives you even a slightly smaller spread. And the quality of the interpolation is, uh, is very good. So uh, actually, if you look at the quality of the interpolation for SEDM, which is blue, it is almost like a pretty good, almost everywhere, but there are still a few points that are not so good, and the variational uh, formulation corrects that. Uh, so uh, another interesting feature is that uh, it uh, maybe coincidentally restores some symmetry. Uh, so we know that all the, uh, 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 the, uh, or the nature of the orbitals. And uh, so because once you, uh, if you don't include the conduction band, it's a sigma bond. Uh, but uh, if you include the conduction band and it should be SP nature. And uh, so indeed you get the, uh, the, 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 the shape of the orbitals. And you see this, uh, the value of the spread for all the localized orbitals uh, is exactly the same, which is not true for the SDM, which seems to separate them into two groups, but not true when you run the two-step uh, optimization uh, one year either. Uh, it is still separate into the two groups, but uh, although the difference is, uh, is much smaller. Uh, so uh, using this uh, a much more stringent test of this procedure is uh, to apply this to the uniform electron gas. Uh, so it seems uh, uh, I'm running out of time. Let me just uh, quickly say uh, this. So the, for the 1D, uh, you can try to interpolate, uh, uh, you can freeze the lower band and you have two bands and uh, let it interpolate. Uh, it would, because there are band crossings here and here, it wouldn't uh, be able to interpret everywhere as well. But if you freeze one band, it does a very good job. And these are the shape of the one-year functions. What is very interesting is that, uh, so 
um, the resulting one year function, it, uh, it, it oscillates, but has a one over R squared decay of the envelope, which means it's the resulting thing is definitely not exponentially localized, it's algebraically localized, uh, but, uh, 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 but nonetheless, it's uh, like it has a localized feature and uh, uh, looks so, something like this in the Fourier space. Uh, so, uh, so the algebraic localization is related, uh, is related to the behavior of the one year function in the Fourier space. And uh, there is a so-called gauge smoothing technique that you can apply to enhance this algebraic decay to the so-called super algebraic decay, uh, which is uh, numerically is, uh, can be seen as a almost exponential decay. And the theory uh, of this uh, procedure uh, is established in this paper published in an Annals of Henri Poincaré in 2019. And uh, uh, we, in our paper, we provided implementation of a, a, a possible gauge smoothing technique and which fixes some of the smoothness issue uh, in the Fourier space. And indeed in the real space, you see it's a, a super algebraic decay. Um, you can apply this thing to 2D as well. Uh, these are the shape of the one year functions. Pretty weird looking. I think there are a lot of mathematical questions you can ask, even though the systems like uniform natural gas, uh, like you uh, in the Fourier space, these are the shape of the 2D uh, one year, uh, like the one year localized orbitals for uniform natural gas, like in, in the real space. Again, if you don't apply any gauge smoothing, you get one raw square decay. Uh, so let me uh, conclude. Uh, that uh, we think that SDM is a useful technique for one year 90. And uh, uh, because uh, uh, the current procedure uh, of using it is that one SDM provides you an initial set of gauge matrix, I think in one year 90 called AMN. And uh, you, you don't any uh, require any input, especially not like input of the, uh, where the orbitals are and uh, where the centers are, so on and so forth. Uh, so SDM should provide you uh, uh, in a black box fashion, and this is, uh, and then you can you run one year or other like a, a variational uh, tools to further uh, improve the quality of the orbitals. This is really useful for some high throughput calculations, and uh, uh, again, Valerio will talk about that tomorrow, uh, and uh, uh, so the variational optimization further helps. Uh, especially when you have entangled band, but I think the understanding of that is still at the beginning. Uh, I hope I have conveyed that the spread is not necessarily everything. You need to uh, consider your task. Uh, so a very interesting uh, thing is about symmetry. I think this workshop uh, and also the summer school, there are other hands-on uh, talks on that. I think the symmetry is a uh, very important, especially for topological materials. And uh, uh, we're also uh, thinking along this direction as well. And uh, uh, finally, uh, one particular system we're currently interested in are uh, our Mori systems, and which has uh, quite intricate uh, uh, natures, uh, very interesting looking one year orbitals. So, uh, with this, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Lynn, for the great talk. Now we open it up for questions. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, Stepan will go through the desk and give you the microphone. And while we do this, if there are participants online who have questions, please type them in the chat or raise your hand and we will unmute you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the interesting talk. I have a question about your lab part, the gauge smoothing part. So do you think the kind of strategy will be practically useful to achieve super algebra decay in entangled bands? Sorry, uh, could you uh, let me know the slide number? And uh, I, I didn't hear the question very clearly. So you can come here and ask it here too. It's easier. I'm not sure it's the volume thing. Uh, yeah, it's just I didn't hear it. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Do, do you think this uh, the gauge smoothing technique will be practically useful to achieve, like, to generate more localized minor functions? Uh, 
Oh, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, so it, it is an interesting technique, uh, but uh, 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 I, I'm not sure whether it's practically useful. It's more of an interesting observation. Uh, the procedures described in our paper, uh, I can uh, simply, uh, yeah, so the, the high level idea is that you see these kinks and you want to smooth them out. And uh, as long as the thing is uh, uh, smooth in the Fourier domain, then you can mathematically prove that this is uh, uh, is going to have decay in the real space. And this paper says that for some general metallic systems, you can do similar things. But it also, uh, I'm, I'm sure it also distorts uh, like some other uh, like physical properties because, uh, as I said, a spread is not the only thing. And uh, another thing you should uh, pay attention to is that although the decay is nice, the pre-constant may not be uh, because, uh, you know, I mean, this one is the, initially the one year thing decays pretty fast, but this one initially is not necessarily decayed. Uh, I mean, maybe similar, but uh, not necessarily faster, you know, with, especially if you truncate the tail to this range. Uh, so, uh, yeah, short answer to your questions, I don't know, but uh, for specific systems that you know where the kinks are, you can certainly experiment with those. Okay. Are there any other questions here? Raise your hand. So anyone on Zoom? Well, there is a question on Zoom from Valerio. So let Valerio just give me a second and I will unmute you. Uh, Yeah. Um, uh, you're okay. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Lin. Hi, Hello. Uh, hi. So yeah, so I was thinking about this uh, issue with the with the symmetries and okay. uh, and I was wondering. So when you do SCDM and you want to uh, vanierize a set of bands that let's say have the same center. Right, and you want to do one shot at CDM. Um, how important is the grid, uh, the real space grid, uh, whether it has to include uh, that particular center or a, or a week of, let's say it's a week of position or something like that. Now, how important is that uh, the grid, the real space grid that has that point, that is the center of the Vanier function? Oh, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, thanks. Uh, so uh, the short answer is I don't have a direct experience of this. Uh, for the symmetry, I'm aware of like two works. One is the thing, uh, symmetry adaptive work that's already going to be presented at length in this uh, in this workshop. The other is a more recent one. I forgot, sorry, I forgot the authors like uh, uh, published the last year and uh, which is uh, like, uh, again, projected to some uh, other orbitals that you can uh, work with the symmetry groups. Uh, both are very nice approaches, and I don't have a good idea uh, uh, whether the SCDM will be a more useful approach in that context. But indeed, as you said, the uh, if you want to use SCDM and make it symmetry adapted, uh, the uh, most straightforward idea is to uh, select the points to satisfy the corresponding symmetry property. Uh, and to, to be able to do this, you might have uh, some constraints on the set of grids you use. Uh, for example, if you want to imp implement a C3 symmetry, I mean, it's going to be pretty annoying uh, in the uh, context of uh, like uh, a plane wave grid, right? Uh, the dual is mm -hmm. not likely going to satisfy the C3 symmetry. So uh, uh, therefore, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I think it will be uh, nice to see the performance for simpler symmetry, C4 or C2 or something like that, and see whether that already does the job. But more generally, uh, I my current thinking, again, so just the thinking has still uh, like hasn't been implemented, is to work with the sewing matrices and uh, 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 like uh, uh, to impose some sort of algebraic conditions uh, uh, in the within the variational framework is probably the most mm -hmm. straightforward idea. But again, I, I don't have a, like a working knowledge on this topic, but if you have, a, or other people in the audience have a insights to share, I'll be very interested to hear. Thanks, and uh, I have also another question. What, uh, what, what uh, is interesting to you about Moray system? Because I'm uh, also 
in oh yeah in uh, uh, yeah yeah so there there are two things and uh, one is i don't know uh, you or whether you or uh, other people in the audience are uh, 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 are experts on this so uh, if you consider the twisted body aircrafting for example for other things like tmdc and the things are different and uh, has been reported back in 2018 uh, that uh, if you try to localize within the uh, two flat bands uh, per spin in the valley, and uh, you you get this uh, kind of like uh, like a fidget uh, like a spinner uh, type of uh, uh, like three claw relief uh, uh, yeah uh, kind of uh, one year uh, functions, and uh, I yeah which is on a very vast scale, and it's kind of interesting and is uh, is accompanied with the so-called fragile topology. Uh, exactly, which is yeah. uh, kind of uh, like uh, interesting. We want to understand this a little bit better. Uh, but uh, 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 there has also, uh, it's related to symmetry, has been uh, arguments uh, from the physics side saying that uh, uh, this one year functions, although they localize, but if you start truncating them, they don't comp uh, generate as nice like uh, uh, physical observables they want to detect later, such as C2T symmetry breaking, because the choice of the one year already breaks uh, some sort of a symmetry. That's all, this kind of argument is always a source of a mystery to me. And uh, yeah, we also have a, a, a little bit, I mean, I, uh, but we do have a, a, a project on this uh, body here. As a matter of fact, the reason why I cannot be there interested is because this week there's this Mori workshop like, oh, uh, like okay. uh, uh, in, in iPad. <laughs> and uh, so, so I look forward to hearing experts uh, you know, like uh, McDonald or other people like on, on this on this topic. So, uh, okay. I, I hope I can Thanks. report more in the future. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, that's great. Are there any other questions here? Uh, if not, I think we can thank again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll stop the recording now.